Tuesday morning transformation. Here we go again. I got something that's going to kind of play off last week, but this one's really important. And there's a reason that I'm going through this as big truck goes by. Part of that reason is recently I've had people come into my life, they just got a diagnosis. You know, they have a limited time to live. They have these conditions. They're telling me their stories. And the thing is, we're going to go through this in life. It's just life. Things happen, right? We go through it all, and it seems like the strongest people have the biggest challenges. You know what I mean? And, the, and there's the old adage, you know, God knows how strong you are. He knows what you can take, right? And then he can only give you what you can handle. And sometimes, like, God, you must have more faith in me than I do because I feel like I'm handling a lot. But the conditions aren't the problem. The conditions is what we say. The problem is what we say about our conditions and we're using the language of ownership. So what's that mean? Ownership, imagine like you have a car, you say, that's mine, right? You possess it. So when we say, I have cancer, then you're owning it. Well, how can you heal if you have ownership language? Proverbs 8, 18, 21, is that what it is? 1821, I believe. Let's look, let me look at my notes. Yep, 1821. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it eat its fruits. So what's that mean? Those who love it. It means when we understand that life and death is in the power of our words. So when Moses went to the mountain, ready to God his purpose, he said, who shall I say sent me? By the way, God denies God six times. The first thing is God says, I am that I am, right? So who's God? I am. So when we use ownership language, we're really separating ourselves and we're owning our condition. So we say, I have cancer. Well, then you're going to say, well, what do I say instead? Well, I've been diagnosed with cancer. See, that's a difference because what's a diagnosis? It's a name. It's a name that health providers have to give you so they can identify something because what are they going to say? Well, hell, I don't know what it is, right? That, that doesn't give you anything. And then they have this protocol that they use to treat it. But the reality is when you say, I have this disease, you're taking ownership and you're cutting off God from the healing within inside you. We got to get rid of that ownership language. When you say, I am dyslexic, well, what's dyslexia mean? Your brain's wired a little bit differently. God actually created you to be great. Hey, Richard Branson's dyslexic. Steve Jobs is, to is ADD, right? Leonardo da Vinci was dyslexic. Albert Einstein was dyslexic. All that means is you have a brain that's wired that you think more powerfully. Maybe you can't read in a classroom that's all lined up like this. Maybe you switch letters around. By the way, we all do. Maybe I'm a little dyslexic. Right, but what it is, is that's a powerful brain that's a world changer. You know, my son got a DPT shot when he was young and he reacted to it. And he definitely, if he looked at the characteristics of what supposedly is ADD, man, he had all of them. And I used to tell him, you have a, God gave you a very powerful brain. You know, it's like a rocket launcher, RPG rocket launcher, right? So you gotta be careful where you point it. Guess what a characteristic of ADD is? You know, yeah, they may be a little chaotic and disorganized, but once they chew and bite onto something, man, they're like a pit bull. They won't let go. AD, highly ADD people have world-changing brains. They see life differently. They don't conform, and they get locked onto something, man, and they change the world. So where is the gift in whatever it is that you say, I have? So let's choose our words differently. So to say, I am, right? Who are we? We're a child of God. We have power. We're here for a life purpose. Now, in A Course in Miracles, it says that all sickness is a separation between mind and spirit. Now, I'm paraphrasing. Separation, what's that mean? It means our spirit has this purpose. We have the power to do everything. And our mind says, no, our mind has ownership language. Our mind says we can't. So if all sickness... It's a separation between mind and spirit. Then we go to Map of Consciousness by David Hawkins, quantum physicist. And he says, when you get to the level of internal joy, the physical manifestation is transfiguration. So check that out. Joy in your mind is connecting with your spirit. And when we connect our mind and our spirit together, we have the thoughts of God. We're supposed to have the thoughts of God. 
our body transfigures, we change physical matter. Right, so is that, is all sickness really a separation between mind and spirit? So I know in my life when I go through challenges and I've been through some big ones, especially in the past, my mantra is I'm turning a test into a testimony. I'm turning a test into a testimony. So what are you going through right now? Now I went through some big things about 15 years ago, a wild career change, all kinds of things. And I said, God, I'm turning a test into a testimony. So when you get me through this, then I will always testify to your power. Guess what? This is one thing. Tuesday morning transformations are the testimony of the tests that I've been through in the past and still go through now. You know, yesterday I was talking to a gentleman and he said, you changed my life over a year ago. I'm like, really? How'd that happen? Because, you know, I didn't really realize it. Maybe it was just a conversation. He said, I was going through a lot of things. He was going through his story, and I remember going through his story. I'm going through this, and trouble, 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 and chaos, and this, and powerlessness, and all this stuff, right? And I interrupted that pattern, stopped him, and I said, I have a question for you. Do you know God? And he said, yes. And then I said, it sure doesn't look like it, right? And he, boom, I guess that hit him. And since that one statement, he's been living his life differently, changed his life. His faith has made him totally empowered. So you never know how far reaching something you think, say, or do today will affect the lives of millions tomorrow. So let's turn that test into a testimony. Now, First Chronicles, uh, I forget which one it is. Let me get that. Let me check it out. First Chronicles 21.3. See, I, I put my hand on the Bible and I say, God, tell me what I need today. So what's been pulling up the last couple days? The Lord makes his people a hundred times stronger than they are. A hundred times stronger. The Lord makes his people a hundred times stronger. So what do we do? We say, I am a hundred times stronger than anything in the world. We are overcomers. I am an overcomer, right? I go through life with the power of God inside me. He that is in me is greater than he that's in the world. I am a force of nature. I am a force for God. How about those affirmations? So here's my prop, do you see these? This, this is the diagnosis. This is the cancer, this is the spinal condition. This is the brain problem. This is the traumatic brain injury. This is saying I have this and I am that, guess what? Oh, you can take that off. Here's the diagnosis. Guess what? Here's the divorce. Here's the here's the physical abuse. Here's the here's the man that beat up the woman and almost killed her. Here's the here's the sexual assault. Here's the emotional abuse. And this says I am a victim. When in reality I can turn my pain into purpose. And I can say because of that I can, and I made it through and God gave me the courage and the spirit and strength that I may, I actually live through that and I can let that go and I can, I can have forgiveness so I can go to other people in a state of joy and peace and to be able to take them through it. So here's the victim. You can take that identity off, right? Here's the divorce of what I lost, where you can feel I lost. Here's the father that won't take a responsibility or the mother that walks out or, or, you know, leaves a person as a single parent, or here's what's unfair about my job because I do everything right. So here's that life-changing experience. We can take that off, right? What else is there? Here's, I was a drug addict. Here's, I'm not good enough. Here's, my parents didn't love me, <laughs> right? <laughs> Whatever that is. Let's, let's just take that off. And we can take these shirts off. Okay, this one's staying on. But what are we left with? We're left with our power. We're left with the power of God. That's what we're left with. So take all these. These are all the identities that we've carried in the past, right? We can take those off and just say, I'm a child of God, I have my sole purpose. Other people are not on my sole purpose. They may not understand me, but that doesn't matter. I love them unconditionally anyway, but I am on that path. So let's let it go. Let's identity be a child of God and let's have the power that's a hundred times stronger that we can have a hundred times more effect in the world.
There you go. Hey, like, comment, please share this. I know there's people running around just got that diagnosis. Man, they've been a victim. Man, I got cheated on. Man, they're not fair at work. Look at all these identities. This is, there's not enough shirts. How can I get more shirts? But we can just take them all off. Like, share, comment. Let's send this around the world. Love you. See you next week.